I'm just going to give you a window inside of what it's like to really be on the front line of actually assisting humanity at this stage, right? So you're peeping out the whole thing as you're, you know, continuously risking your life and risking your time, your energy. You risk your life anyway when you spend your time and your energy and it's going externally out to other things. That's risking your life, right? And so, you know, you could be in this risking your life and working to assist others. This position is called the lover of self, okay? So let's look at that here on the chart here. The lover of self because they've realized that all is self, okay? This is this position here, okay? So this is the being that really wants to help as many people as possible because they realize when it's really, again, crystallized, they realize this one key fundamental. They know that the people that we're really trying to get the attention of are the ones that are lost. We already have those that are found, or the found, as I call it. So let me, let me slow this down and bring all this into retrospect. So it doesn't matter what you're really doing in life. It always crystallizes into these maxims. That when I set out to go and do something for someone, I'm either going to have, I'm going to have only three different modes of thought on why I would do that. Okay. And, and in this aspect, the lover of self, they realize that no matter what you develop, we call it preaching to the choir. If you're developing something to help or assist someone and you apply that assistance to them and now they're cured, whatever you have is not really for them anymore. It's for those that still have the sickness. You see what I mean? So that means that if you at any point start taking on this idea that it's, it's kind of like us versus them, you lose the point right away because them is who you were going after in the first place. It, it wasn't us. So I want to make that very clear that generally if you're applying anything like healing and power, it is for, you're literally, you're this building that says hospital. And everybody that's coming to you is sick. And then you're going to administer to them this, this healing. And then once they are cured, you cannot take on the aspect like it's me and the cured versus the sick. <laughs> all this wisdom and all this knowledge is come from my own experience and my conversation with myself. Like always going in on the maintenance and self and be like, yo, where are you at? You know, you, you okay? You know, you start seeing too much stuff going on. You got to yo, yo, you okay? Okay, look, remember, this is not a choice here. You must be the lover of self. All is self, because remember, what you came here for is not about you, and it's not about everybody else that has it already. It's about the people who don't have it. That's the mission that I sent you on. And as long as you remember that, then you won't get tangled up in all of the stuff that I'm going to show you also that is just traps along the way. It's like everybody became in history a fisher of men, if you may, or a fisher of souls to trap and to catch souls. In a net, whether it's the web net, well, Webster, Webster's dictionary throwing webs, internet in, in, in the web, world wide web throwing webs. But these webs are not the same webs that our ancestors, our mother goddess was weaving. It is not the original weave, which we showed you earlier. The weave is the torsion field the knowledge of your power, the design of your power. And it's like, there is nothing else. Anything else you bring into that is going to tamper with that. Is going to uh, bring a misalignment within that. And so this build, starting off this, 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 this anu this year, is about aligning everything inside of you. Because this power and this ability, once you realize, okay, well, let me snap back into this. <laughs> Shake it off. Like, it's not us versus them. <laughs> I'm actually here to cure all things. I'm here to shine. Like, I'm here to do something that has never even been done before. Because when you start taking on that energy, again, I said, once to see others do better. Like, once I realized the code to the language and how tricky that was, the priestcraft and the layers of hypnosis they put into the reality and the programming, et cetera. Once I realized all that, I sat back for a moment 
And I said, man, I can't even be mad at anybody. Even if the fact that they're still alive, still not insane completely, is growth, <laughs> is a miracle. Because, wow, how can someone survive in something like this? So I, I stopped putting the blame on the people, letting the people be the scapegoat, letting them become the thing that you crucify and you curse. I released that burden from them and I released the burden from myself because all is self. And eventually when you become a master at this, which I can't say that I'm exactly there yet, but I can see patterns really well and that's helping me. I see the code in the matrix. You can eventually get to this space, the unconditional love space, right? Now even people don't, sometimes a divine masculine doesn't even feel right with that kind of unconditional love. Wait a minute, hold on, let me get my sword. Let me, you see, the unconditional love space is like, it's, it's almost unperceivable, especially for a destroyer. But what happens here is that there's this, this is why there's always this bodhisattva, avatar, messiah type thing, which I'm really gonna show you is the great mother by the end of this conversation, because technically still the bodhisattvas, the messiahs, the avatars are actually Eve angels within themselves and they need to move out of the way <laughs> and actually in the consciousness, let the consciousness actually be what it is. Now they themselves may be ropes or ladders. Let's say at some point somebody conceived that maybe the way back or the way to fix the mess we made could be this, but it hasn't been working really well. And that's why I was saying on the, in the other bill, it's like we have to be willing to jump back into the framework and say, okay, that one's got, you know, how that one was deployed. It's only got 20% success. Can we do better? But again, the examples you have is this Bodhisattva, this Messiah type. And what they're about is, is this unconditional. So they don't care what others think. And they even test this constantly. This is very important to remember. Because some may think, yes, that's me. <laughs> yeah, they jump right into that seat. It's like, wait a minute, no. These kind of beings, they test this constantly, this awareness that must be around them in the field for everyone that basically they don't care what you think. <laughs> so when I say they test that constantly, here's an example. So you have like a master Master guru, whatever term you want to give them, which seem to be all male terms, which again, you'll kind of peep the, the deception here in a moment. But so you got this master guru, blah, 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 whatever, right? So he delivers this, this huge satsang or whatever, this powerful knowledge, right? Everybody's sitting there in awe, like, <sighs> man, even the energy and the vibration is flowing across the field and everything. And then when everybody starts looking at him or her, and starts that idolized pro idolization process, they'll do something like fart. Constantly testing, <laughs> wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> if you're thinking that I'm all holy and all sanctimonious, that's not gonna help you. <laughs> what you need to learn is to be free of judgment, to not care. So I'm going to keep testing your ability to actually, what is your leniency on me? You want to put me on this way, on this high pedestal? Watch me fall off. Boom. Let me do something. That, oh, my goodness. He's, he's not holy. Oh, my goodness. You see what I mean? Because what they have to do is constantly maintain a certain vibration in the space that you don't lose sight of who you are. And that's why I said they're fulfilled and untouchable. Because they're never going to let you draw them into that whole thing. Oh, master, blah, 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 which becomes the, oh, the category. Here's the master. Here's everybody else. I would rather be around the master. <laughs> you see, so with our awareness, this is how consistently our growth, because we're going to be way more refined, especially even after we adjourn from this space, you're going to be so refined the main thing is to not let anything come out of your refinement, take you out of your refinement. See, for me, it's interesting because every single time I open a portal, especially from the web, like a Instagram or a Twitter or whatever, 
whatever I'm about to sin can only still come from one perspective. You cannot sin anything all encompassing and universal down that. Right. So as I said before, now I got to jack in. That's why they call it a jack, the joker. Now you got to jack in, go into the game, still as the, the trump card. But now, again, the game, the game begins because it's only a, a spectrum. That's why it's a game, because it's not the real thing. The real thing is the whole thing. And you haven't seen the whole thing yet. So any part of the whole thing is called the illusion. It's a fraction, a shimmer. So now we must enter into the worlds of light. 